Melanie Perkins is the founder of the online graphic design software company Canva, which is the fifth largest unicorn in the world with the annual revenue of over $1 billion and is valued at $40 billion. Melanie Perkins is the second richest Australian woman with personal net worth of $6.5 billion according to Forbes. She and her husband owned 18% stake each in Canva, making their combined net worth of over $13 billion. The couple's combined net worth suggests that they are fifth richest in Australia and the way their company Canva is growing, it looks like in coming years, they may easily surpass the richest Australian, Gina Reinhart, whose net worth is around $29 billion. Melanie Perkins is the only youngest Australian woman who owns a startup that was backed by venture companies, and she is the only self-made billionaire in Australia. Want to know how, at the age of just 35, Melanie Perkins is able to achieve which no one in Australia had ever done before? Watch the full video. Melanie Perkins, the founder of $40 Billion Canva We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. In 1988, Melanie Perkins was born in Perth, Australia to a well-educated Filipino family. Her mother was born in the Philippines while her father was born in Australia to a Malaysian parents, which were originally from the Philippines. Melanie Perkins received her primary and secondary education from Sacred Heart College, a school located in the western suburbs of Perth. However, starting from her early life, Perkins had an undying passion for running her own business. It is reported that she used to sell handmade stuff like scarves and stockings at the age of 14. It is essential to note here that this was a time when she had not even completed her secondary education. According to Perkins herself, she received an immense sense of freedom and financial independence by running her own business from an early age. She also credits this experience of her life as the groundbreaking for her career as an entrepreneur. It was this early experience that made her one of the youngest CEOs to own a business that is worth $40 billion. After completing her early education, Perkins went on to graduate from the University of Western Australia. Here, she majored in commerce, psychology, and communication. During her university years, Perkins taught students graphic design. As an amateur tutor of graphic design, Perkins felt the difficulties that her students faced. Essentially, Perkins understood that it was pretty difficult for her students to learn the complex process of graphic designing. Perhaps the foremost among them all was learning Adobe Photoshop. From her experience as a tutor of graphic design, Perkins noticed that there was a business opportunity. She thought that she could make the process of graphic designing easier by introducing easy and convenient features to Adobe Photoshop and other graphic design complexities. As Perkins graduated from the University of Western Australia, she still had this grand vision of introducing easy and convenient features of graphic design. In 2007, Perkins met with Cliff Obrecht, who was studying in the same university, and they both collaborated to start their first startup called Fusion Books. The prime objective of founding Fusion Books was to make graphic design an easy, reliable, and fun skill to learn and master. Since she had felt that her students would spend a complete semester learning graphic design and would still not master the skill, this is where she thought that Fusion Books would come into play. Initially, Perkins and Obrecht wanted to develop software to make graphic design an easy process. But later on, she felt that the market competition was very high, and she did not have the required resources and equipment. That is why Perkins and Obrecht gave up on the idea of developing graphic design software. Instead, they allowed their students to design their college yearbooks. Fusion Books equipped the students with illustrations, photos, fonts, and templates to design yearbooks. Thus, the students were able to develop and master the skill of graphic design through an easy and simple drag-and-drop process. In the initial years, Fusion Books was not as widely successful as Perkins and Obrecht expected it to be. During these years, Obrecht and Perkins would call schools and invite the students to learn graphic design skills with Fusion Books. In 2012, the struggle finally paid off after five years of consistent efforts. Fusion Books became one of the largest yearbook designers throughout Australia. In the following years, Fusion Books expanded internationally, and in 2014, Fusion Books was launched in New Zealand and France. It is essential to note here that this was the time when the net worth of Melanie Perkins doubled. 
According to a Forbes report, Perkins was on her way to becoming one of the richest and youngest women in Australia to own a tech startup in 2016. It is apparent that by that time, all of her income came from Fusion Books as it was her only operational business. Perkins had a vision of developing an easy and reliable software that would make graphic design an easy skill to learn. Since she did not have the required resources at the initial level, she was unable to come up with software that would solve the problems of the students who were interested in graphic design. However, Perkins and Obrecht made their dream of developing new software for graphic design come true as Fusion Books grew. In 2011, Perkins and Obrecht were successful in launching a new software for the graphic design called Canva. That is right, what graphic designers use today, what is called Canva, which is an easy-to-deal-with software, is a brainchild of Melanie Perkins. Initially, Perkins and Obrecht pitched the idea of Canva to many investors and business tycoons of the time. Bill Tai and Rick Backer, the founder of Blackbird Ventures, are the two investors who declined to make a deal with Perkins and Obrecht. Essentially, they were of the opinion that the business idea would collapse as the market is already filled with competitors. It is essential to note here that by the time when Canva was launched, there was numberless alternative software for graphic design. Thus, investors were reluctant to put their money into a portfolio that was totally naive in the marketplace. However, it was the co-founder of Google Maps, Lars Rasmussen, who felt that there was potential for a great business that Obrecht pitched him over dinner. As Lars was living in Silicon Valley, he wanted Perkins and Obrecht to put everything on hold until he revisits Perth, Australia. The founders of Canva, Perkins and Obrecht, did so and went for over six months. After six months, accepted the deal and became the third founder of Canva. As joined Canva, the company boomed. Since he had the expertise of the required caliber, he played a pivotal role in taking Canva to the next level. Later on, he also became the chief product officer of Canva. Today, Canva revenue is over $1 billion, and it employs over 2,000 employees. One of the fundamental obstacles that Perkins has faced throughout her journey is gender disparity. By the time when Perkins was emerging as a female entrepreneur, it was largely tabooed in Australia for a woman to be ahead of a startup. Especially, it was unbecoming for a tech company to be founded and run by a woman. Thus, she was rejected by many investors and business tycoons only because the business was headed by a woman. Perkins has openly talked about gender discrimination in the tech industry. She has been an ambassador for women who are aspiring to become entrepreneurs. Perkins has also written articles where she has openly talked about her journey and the obstacles that she had faced only because she was a woman. With that said, Perkins dedicates a vast majority of her time, energy, and net worth to eliminating gender discrimination in tech startups. According to reports, Perkins donates wholeheartedly to combat gender discrimination in the tech industry. In 2019, she donated $55 million Australian dollars to address female entrepreneurs' issues in Western Australia. As she has this grand vision of eliminating the problems of women in the tech business, she goes to every extent and gives out a sheer amount of her money for the good cause. Likewise, Perkins also addresses Australian women who are aspiring to be entrepreneurs every month. With her journey and life lessons, Perkins inspired thousands of Australian women to follow their dreams and achieve their passions. Her public lectures let Australian women lead businesses and not lag behind only because they are born women. In 2021, Perkins also pledged half of her entire net worth that equals $6.5 billion today. Apart from addressing gender discrimination, her charities are in support of women's education, women empowerment, and financially supporting women who are aspiring to run a business. Every year, a sheer part of Perkins' income goes to charities that in turn are used to address the major issues of women across Australia. Melanie Perkins came from a well-educated family. She had a business acumen from a very beginning as she used to sell handmade stuff at the age of 14. Business acumen with her highly educated family background proved to be the luckiest thing for her as in university, she taught graphic designing and learned that there is a huge market for graphic designing software. Being a problem solver, she knew she had no resources to create a software that will make the designing world better and easy. So she created another startup, Fusion Books, and gathered resources to create the software Canva.
which made her the richest self-made billionaire in Australia. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.